Mm. All right, y'all. Finally, the the last part of this story with Latoya Jackson is when she had to actually confront her mother, and she did confront her mother. Um, from the, it's and in, in my opinion, helped free herself from the codependency, from the control. Um, that her parents had it just exhibited all over her. Um, and it went a little something like this. Okay, because this is in the time, let me just frame it, set it up, was when they were trying to, according to a Latoya, trying to kidnap her. And on several different occasions, they didn't want her to leave. Joe actually thought that he owned her, in her opinion. He wouldn't, he... I read how he wouldn't allow her contract to be held by anybody else um, and that she belonged to the Jackson. She belonged home and yada, 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 yada. Okay. Smothering madness. So, uh, when Latoya finally had had enough, she told Jack, I, I, this has got to stop. I'm calling mother. The first few minutes of our conversation were just chat. And when I couldn't stand it anymore, I said, mother, I want you to know right now that I know what you're doing. I know that you and Joseph threatened to have Jack killed. I also know that you tried to kidnap me twice now. You should know that if anything happens to Jack, I'll go straight to the police and tell them that you did it. Do you understand me? You. So you better pray that it, he doesn't get hit by a car or nothing happens to him. Another thing. Don't ever forget, mother, I know you better than anyone else in the whole world. I was your best friend. You can fool Joseph, you can fool Mike, and you can fool everybody in this house. But you can't fool me. I know all about you. You throw the rock, and then you hide your hand. Mother was screaming hysterically. Don't you dare talk to me like that. Don't you dare talk to me like that. I'm your mother. I'm your mother. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? I waited for her to deny my accusations, but she never did. You had an attorney with you at the jockey club too. When you did that, when you did, when you did what you did, you were at the jockey club. What do you mean? When I when you did what you did, we wouldn't kidnap you, Joseph. On the extension, as always, added, you're over 21. We can't kidnap you. Besides, what would we do with you if we did? What would they do? They'd keep me at home. Bye, mother. I'm tired of playing this games with you. Goodbye. My God. I hung up feeling like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I can't believe that I just did that, I said to Jack. I was amazed at myself. I can't believe that I did that. And it was long overdue. Within minutes, Marlon called. He'd been visiting Havenhurst when I called, so I knew Mother had put him up to it. See, one thing about these large families, like I said, they're so dysfunctional because they're so intertwined. They're so self-contained. These, you know, really large, or take them, you know, be Y'all might think that... Um, being involved in a big family is exciting. No, it's so much enmeshment going on most of the time. It's so much drama and dysfunction in these large families. Anyway, they put Marlon up to uh, calling her, obviously. Mother put him up to it. My brother offered his congratulations on my marriage. And then he abruptly asked that I relinquish my deeds for the share of the Haven Hurst home that I own, that, that we own, his share, her share of Havenhurst. I refused. Jack asked Marlon to tell my parents and all the guys to phone Oscar Goodman's office the next day for a mass conference call. I really believe that if we all talk, we can resolve these problems. Yeah, that's a good idea, Marlon agreed, promising to spread the word. My bodyguard, Johnny, accompanied Jack to Vegas for the meeting at his attorney's office, running to Mr. Edwards at the coffee machine. The minute they came face to face, Mr. Edwards' eyes lit up as he took off for the front door. 
Hearing the commotion, Jack and Oscar came out of the inner office to see Johnny holding Edwards and breathing breathless and saying breathlessly, Jack, this is the one who was with Latoya's parents at the jockey club. The pasty faced white man. They all sat down to talk, but it soon but it was soon clear nothing would be accomplished. Despite Marlon's promise, not one member of my family ever called. And when Jack noticed Edward was wired, recording the entire conversation, he exploded. Apparently the family doesn't want to bring this to a peaceful end. He fumed, I ought to report you. A licensed attorney getting involved in an attempted kidnapping. I wasn't there to do anything that they were doing. This is what Mr. Ed uh, protested. I didn't do anything. Then why were you there? I'll tell you why you were there. So that the police, if the police happened to intervene, you could introduce yourself and tell them this was a private matter and then send the police on their way. Well, who's writing a book? Edward asked abruptly. Latoya's writing a book, Jack replied. Well, can you stop the book? No, she wants to write the book. Are you sure it's not you who wants to write it? No, it's her book. And that's, and what about the deeds to the property? It's her property. You'll have to ask her. Will she give them back? Why should she? You've got to stop harassment. Well, at least they had something to pass on their children. Like a lot of black folks don't. We don't, most of us don't pass anything down. We don't have anything. It was stolen off from us. So, you know, and those of us who do, some of us think that we're so dysfunctional that a lot of times we think that we're doing our children a favor. That's when you know your family is really crazy. Doing a favor by passing on the property to the uh, to the next generation instead of just letting them just fight it out or have it in probate because you don't want to take care of your business. See, that's Ooh, that's all dysfunction. All right. Now with that, uh, he said, well, I'd like to resolve this matter. He had one more question. Are the two of you married or not? We're married, Jack said. With that, the meeting ended. It, inexplicably, when Jack, his attorney, Oscar and Johnny, and another security person got downstairs, a reporter was waiting. Apparently tipped off that something was about to happen, but what? So we left for Nevada the next day. You know, this hurt me a thousand times. She said, I still didn't feel safe, having subsequently learned that several of my siblings attended family meetings where the kidnapping was discussed. This hurt me a thousand times more than anything that Joseph and mother ever did. If among them not a single one thought enough of me to call me and warn me who knew where this would end see and this is how you see the enmeshment you you see the enmeshment so she goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on uh, uh then she heard at one time that was uh, janet in the background how are you latoya how are you doing she must have asked me this five or six times, and in the background, I could distinctly hear Janet on the phone. Shh, 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 it's Latoya. A few seconds later, hold it. Michael's, uh, Latoya's on the phone. Another setup, I thought. Okay, so this is how the family operates. It's like that mobile uh, that sits over the crib. You hit one, they all move. You move one that way because it's all enmeshment. She goes, lastly, this is what... Finally, I wanted to uh, say, she says, thinking back over all those years, wow, I realized that mother was the guiding force behind the cruelty and abuse. This lady who pretended to be so gentle on the surface, covert narcissistic, had in fact caused the turmoil in all of our lives. We'd always thought it was Joseph, but really it was her. Telling him what to do, how to do it. And like I said before, she was always throwing the rock and hiding her hand, convincing everyone, outsiders and even my own siblings, that she was just a sweet, kind-hearted, compassionate little lady. Little did that then know, the minute that they were out of earshot of her, she talked about them like dogs, 
very, very viciously. After seeing this so many times, I finally had to face the fact that this was her true personality. Yep. And I'm going to tell you something, Latoya. I believe you. That's usually how it happens. That's usually what happens. You usually find out that your mom or your dad or whichever one you thought was one, you probably figured it was the opposite. And you realize that they were the they were the orchestrator. They in fact kept everyone at bay with their covert narcissism. Oh that's why I said it's like a lifetime movie. You know, when you move to town and everybody loves a certain person, a certain family and all whatever, but you know the person in that movie knows that, oh, something is wrong with that person. I mean, he killed his last wife or she killed her last husband and yada, yada. Everything is not as good as it seems. And then when you tell somebody and this covert narcissism have convinced everybody that they're the saint, then they're all looking at you sideways. What's your agenda? Oh, you really bad mouthing her them? And that's when it becomes a whole nightmare. So when you live in that kind of life, it's imperative that you bust loose. And then you deal with all the retribution and all the damage that's in your life in order to truly be free. Because unless you're willing to do that and break a loose from these crazy people, I didn't say you got to stop loving them. Because I know a lot of y'all have a hard time with that, especially in our community, you know. But this is this is what's making us crazy and the nation crazy. We have become a nation full of narcissists. It's acceptable. It's accepted, and people wear the badge proudly. They just don't know that they're crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. Mentally ill. Emotionally disturbed. Whatever label you want to put on it. Something ain't right. Something, something just ain't right. Ain't how Keith Sweat said. Anyway, that's the last little excerpt from this book, Growing Up Jackson. And y'all tell me how you think about that. Have you been in a situation? Or do you know situations where you know your mother, your father is orchestrating the whole thing? Pretty much triangulating the other members of your family, bad mouthing you or another family member who may be the black sheep of the family or um, the, the the family clown, whatever. But how many of you have grown up in families like this? And it kind of reminds me of the clunk sitting at that dinner table. What the hell is really going on? Okay, a family full of madness. <laughs> With that being said, leave it on like note. All right, you guys. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you can, get a hold to that book, Growing Up Jackson, by Latoya Jackson. And um, it's really an eye-opener. Not just so much the, the Jackson family, but to me it's a story of triumph. Because a person that was so codependent finally broke away and broke loose. And I don't know if a lot of you really understand how hard and difficult that really is. Okay? So, like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share. I'll see you in a moment right here in the mental house. Bye-bye.